god after like so many months we are finally here guys by the time you guys see this hopefully you'll be in the game and having a hella good time and so with that i say Hi, welcome back to our Punishing Grey Raven video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking through kind of like a beginner's guide. Beginner guides are always so vague. So what I want to talk about specifically is kind of like what you should be doing in like the first few days as well as like what you should prioritize. So this may mean like unlocking specific stages or like putting your stamina into different places. But on top of that, I want to talk about kind of like your resource allocation or like who should you invest in if you're looking at it from like a long term point of view. There are a lot of like existing resources for this and I'm going to be referring to them. So like shout out to the people who've made this especially Rexlent who is like a prominent content creator especially for the CN server all right so with that being said I want to kind of talk about like what your first few days are going to look like and what you should work towards the first thing that you need to do is you just need to sink your stamina you need to keep pushing it until you're level 35 the reason you want level 35 is essentially to unlock phantom pain cage and this is essentially like one of your weekly events which are going to give you like different resources this point is talked about a lot and like it kind of covers everything because it's telling you to clear 5-7 normal however to go like full optimal mode you you want to be actually clearing this guy so two one hidden for the weekly bounties with the stamina that we are given like for the first day you should actually be able to unlock this like on on the first day actually so unfortunately i don't have any footage on what the weekly bounties looks like but if you go into your quest tab there's going to be like a new button down here and essentially what happens is that every week you get three quests and those three quests you can actually re-roll so what you want to do is you actually want to re-roll for quests that gives you these purple tickets because hopefully by now you guys have watched either like my cbt videos or my re-rolling videos and you guys Will understand that these purple tickets are like your rolling currency for your standard or beginner banner and so unlocking those bounty missions on like day one is going to give you the maximum amount of chances to kind of like refresh to make sure that you get those three quests personally i've not had too much of a problem with it but like i know there are some unlucky people out there so let's just hedge against that okay on the topic of purple and black tickets you want to be sinking all of your purple tickets into your beginner banner whether you re-rolled or not or whatever some people are going to be like you want to sink your black tickets into like the beginner banner just to like progress as fast as you can my advice is probably to not do that and hold on to these guys so that you can pity the limited characters so yeah just to summarize sink all of your purple tickets into the beginner banner and like hold on to these black tickets up here on top of that just make sure that you guys are going through your novice missions because they actually give a lot of materials okay moving on so i think that's actually it for day one after day one there's actually not that much that you can do you guys should definitely be able to get up to two one hidden and complete that actually and again we'll talk about like who you can invest into safely like later on in the video all right so day one's finished typically you're going to be about like level 25 and so let's start talking about day two. So day two, you're just going to be continuing to push like your story. However, you'll be able to unlock up to 4-8 and hopefully that will get you Warzone. So what Warzone looks like, so let me just show you real quick. As you can see here, this was in the open beta. And so this is essentially what it is. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but if you guys want to learn more about Warzone or Phantom Pain Cage, like check out my guide down in the description below. But essentially Warzone and Phantom Pain Cage are like your two sources of weekly resources. And so you do want to unlock them ASAP so you can start working towards those rewards. On top of that the second most prominent thing and i don't know if i have any footage of it but like essentially in your novice missions you're gonna get the five star live weapon and so here is the weapon that i was talking about so this is actually a login event which is really nice and it spans 14 days because as you can see there are two rounds to this by the end of week one we get this bianca which is really really nice but like what i'm really eyeing is this weapon over here this five star weapon it was essentially made for live and so this is one of the safe weapons that you can invest in and what i mean by safe is that essentially you're going to be looking or working towards like five and six star weapons weapons. Anything that's kind of like four stars or below, you don't really want to invest in. However, if you are having trouble like pushing content, then like you could definitely could do that. And to be honest, it's okay. It's not like sinking a week's worth of resources into like your four star weapons is going to like harm you in the long run. Just make sure you're actually able to clear the game because like it gets pretty hard here. And so I mentioned that at the end of day one, you're going to be about level 25. The thing about day two is that there are going to be some story stages that are locked behind like commandant level 28. And so what that means is that you do need to sink a little bit of resources into like other areas of the game and so as you can see i've got the resource stages here and so this is where i would recommend sinking your stamina there's probably not too much to say here but like try to get at least like your first clears and all of the resource stages on top of that you could consider clearing military hardware so that's this one here three times however you want to be doing military hardware ab2 and the reason is because there is a day three novice mission that is attached to that but yeah sinking your stamina into these guys should get you to level 28 and pass that gate after all of this you should end day two on about commandant level 30 all right so with that being said i'm pretty sure on day three you're going to be hitting like level 35 and so this is where you're going to get your phantom pain cage however we need to start preparing for this now and how you prepare for that is that you kind of need like your second dp 
FPS. Again, very shortly, I'll talk about who you should invest in kind of for like the long term. I think when you hit level 35, it's kind of like free play from here. So like if you're on day three and you're level 35, like congrats, like you've finished the tutorial. And even if you unlock it like one day later, it really does not matter. Okay, so with that being said, I want to talk about like your upgrades or like which is or what is safe to upgrade into. So like I said before, your five star weapons, you can kind of dump everything into it. Four stars and below, you should only push if you really are struggling for content. From here on, I'm just going to refer to consciousnesses as memories because the game makes reference to both. Like they will say both consciousnesses and memories. And I keep fumbling over this freaking word. So let's just say memories. So generally speaking, you're not going to upgrade any four star memories like at all. You're going to be working towards like five star and six star memories, like in particular six star ones. Five stars, typically you're just going to be using them as placeholders. And so just scramble together what you can because we actually get a whole bunch of them like from those quests. So on the topic of the five star memories, let's go through them real quick. And essentially like you're going to be okay if you equip these except for Mozart. Mozart technically is pretty decent, like damage plus 15% during supercomputing space, which is like your bullet time. However, if you're trash at dodging and you can't get bullet time, then obviously you don't run Mozart. Honestly, I think a lot of the other ones are really freaking good because they don't have conditionals attached to them. So for example, you've got Erwin, two set basic attack damage plus 10%. That's already really good. And then if you're a good dodger, you get even more. So that's pretty lit. On top of that, you've got some tutorial missions that actually gives you like Ike. Ike's is also pretty decent. However, seeing this elemental damage is kind of making me want to like tell you a little bit of the logic behind this. Whenever you get any five star or six star, honestly, like any memories, like you should probably come to either this spreadsheet or you should like read the description. The reason is because a lot of the characters, they have like a specific role. So for example, Liv, I think from S through to B, she is a healer. And so there is only really like one that you would really use on her. And so that's this one over here, healing plus 5%. However, you can also see that there is a physical damage buff to this. And so this works out really nicely because Liv typically is physical. However, what this means is that you should also run a physical DPS with Liv. And so slowly you should see this notion of like mono teams coming together. Typically speaking, aside from certain game modes, you're not really going to be looking for like the elemental advantage against enemies. What you're going to be looking for is elemental synergies between characters. So for example, like you got like physical DPS in alpha. And then on top of that, you've got like your B live or your S live who are both physical. And on top of that, you see synergies over here where you gain physical damage. And so it makes so much sense that you're going to be running this kind of set on Liv, who is your supporter or healer for like your physical team. And so hopefully that logic makes a lot of sense to you. And so like, to be honest, every time you get your character, you should be looking at their stats. And what I mean by stats is this guy over here. So this says physical 100%. This 100% physical makes a lot of sense for Liv. It's kind of saying like all of her damage is going to be physical type. However, sometimes you're going to get characters like this, who is 20% physical and 80% lightning. Now, what exactly does this mean? Because that's kind of confusing. All this is, is it's essentially an approximation of like her total damage. So for example, if you did like the standard rotations for Bianca, like over a long period of time, let's say like one minute, adding in together all of the basic attacks, all of the skills and all of that, you would typically be doing 20% physical damage and 80% lightning damage. And so clearly because she's weighted towards lightning, you want to build a lightning team around her. However, not only that, but we also want the lightning memories for her as well. And if you go through some of these, you'll be able to see like elemental resistance down. Elemental resistance down is for those who have like lightning or ice or fire. And on the other hand, you have these guys over here who are like physical defense down. So like they're for your alphas and stuff. So what you really need to take away is essentially match up the types with like their respective characters or rather match up the characters with their respective types. To be honest, that really is all there is to like the five star memories as well as the six stars. The six stars get even more like specialized. So you, as you can see, fire damage over here, you got lightning damage over here. In the end game, it just becomes very, very clear which memories you should be putting on which characters. And so hopefully that should give you a good idea as to what you should run on who. However, with that being said, there are some like generic memories. So for example, Hana. Hana has three orb damage plus 25% and it's not weighted towards like physical or elemental. And so honestly, this could work on anyone. And if you have a look at Adolf's effect, it is actually the same case. And so for memories, when you start working towards the end game, this is kind of what you're going to be looking at. Using all of that logic that I kind of just went through, like people have come up with these different builds. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense, right? So we saw Veritas, aka Bianca before. And Bianca, as we remember, was a lightning type. On top of that, we also noticed that Heisen was like the lightning set. And so it just makes so much sense that it's going to be at least a four set Heisen. However, we are really talking into the end game now, and that's not really a beginner guide, but hopefully that logic will help you kind of like at least prioritize from the four star memories all the way through the end game. But again, just try not to invest into those four star memories because like you're going to need those resources very, very soon. Now, say you have farmed up like some five star memories or some six star memories, or like you really can't push content and you do need to upgrade your four star memories. Typically speaking, you want to really only juice up the ones that are for your main DPS. Your main DPS is probably the unit that's going to be on the field for like the most of the time. And so you should be like juicing them up. And with that, that should give you a good idea as to what to do for memories. And if you guys still don't really understand, then just like drop a comment and let's talk about it. All right. And so the last thing I wanted to talk about is team compositions over here, or rather like who is safe to invest in, in like the foreseeable future. So this is a guide by Sheena. And 
like it seems to get like overlooked really hard and people should not be sleeping on this because this is describing a whole bunch of like the lineups that you could be using for different types of content for example you can see here pain cage and warzone s bianca s vera a chrome a live and so as you can see remember that s bianca was a lightning unit i'm here to tell you that a live is also a lightning healer and you've also got these two lightning units as well so you can see that we are starting to like form these mono element teams especially for specialized content like pain cage and warzone and so these teams typically are like pretty optimal already and so what i'm going to say is that if you see them on this list then they are safe to invest to the key call outs here i want to mention are the b live the s live the b nanami and the a kamui and the reason i want to call them out is because you're going to get your b live from the very start and so i just want to say that she is worth investing into because you will be using her as you can see we've got b live over here along with alpha doing like the physical stuff you know on top of b live you've got a whole bunch of like other a and b units and so that's just really good obviously these team comps are kind of like your optimal ones like your best ones and so these are the ones that people are going to be striving for and so i would say that these are safe investments so in my opinion it's going to be b live for physical teams a live for lightning teams they are going to have a long shelf life for those two teams on top of that we've got b nanami a bianca and a watanabe as well as a kamui here and honestly like i've gone through so much of the logic that you guys should be able to piece this together and if you guys still haven't let me give it to you again in a nutshell a you want to maximize dps and b you want to put all of the same elements together to be honest that really is it like if you need a tank you put it in a tank if you need a healer you put in a healer but generally speaking that's team building 101 done all right guys and so we are coming towards the end of the video and i want to leave you guys with some tips some of them are tips some of them are more like pieces of knowledge that you probably just should know the first thing is that if you are going to do a stage just hit the three stars on it the first time you do it typically speaking unless you have bounties you probably won't be coming back to do these story stages resetting the game does not actually consume any stamina so take advantage of that on top of that i already talked about it before but like push your novice missions so these guys over here you actually get nanami b's five star weapon from this which is really freaking good next i want to talk about memory rescue which is this one over here and so you should try to complete memory rescue asap because you actually get pieces one and four for the darwin set of the memories and on the topic of memories if you did invest into like your five star or four star memories like honestly you shouldn't invest into your four star memories but if you did go into your five star memories just fodder those into your six star memories when you eventually build full sets however over time you're going to be amassing a whole bunch of resources so stuff like this but generally speaking you only really want to be like upgrading or like awakening like your six star memories but putting some of these resources into your five star weapons is definitely good as well on top of that there is a shop and i don't know if i have any footage of it but essentially you can buy some fragments from the shop and honestly that's not a bad deal so unfortunately i don't have any footage so i'm sorry about that the characters that you are using make sure that they are level capped all the time because like it actually creeps up on you pretty easily and as for who to focus i want to say again you want to be focusing all your resources onto your main dps first and then if you do have a sub dps them next otherwise the last bit of interesting information is that elemental damage cannot crit honestly guys that's just how it's been and how it is i think that's kind of it and so let's start wrapping up the video here i'm sorry if it got a little bit dense but there is just like so much to talk about for this game and so hopefully you guys did find this useful and like not overwhelming all right guys so i got a secret message for you guys and that's we're here we finally got here we finally are at the pgr launch this game has been hyped up for so long but we are finally here and so we're here if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below i would really appreciate it because if you do it means that you've actually made it all the way to the end of the video and i appreciate that so thank you so much but otherwise if this video has like kind of helped you or was mildly entertaining then please consider a like a sub a comment you already know what it is join the discord if you do have any questions or feeling a bit lonely and if you would like to support the channel there are a couple of ways down in the description below we've got some affiliate links but we've also got a membership thing where you get a cool little badge and some emojis but otherwise as my dog once said all good things must come to an end so thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you guys in the next video bye bye